Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I want to welcome you to our Tuesday Empowerment Call. I'm coming to you live from the beautiful Red Rock, Sedona, Arizona. And so uh, today we actually have a very special call because uh, we have a true legend from our space that I'm going to be talking to and we're going to be interviewing her and talking to her. And so it's uh, such a privilege and honor for her to be a part of our platform. And so um, I want to welcome everybody to joining us on this and uh, tuning in for this Tuesday here in a sunny, I'm here in sunny Arizona. And so um, before I bring on my guest, I like to, you know, tee up a little bit, just, you know, share a little bit about her background and uh, who we have on the call here uh, this, this afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, and so uh, this lady, she's actually has been in the industry for 42 years. And this year, it's going to be her 42 years. And not only the number of years that she's been involved in this industry, more importantly, she has been with, she was with a company uh, and has has achieved the rank to be number one worldwide in in a household truly a household company i remember when i first got in and she would tell her story uh, of what that company is i remember when i first got into this industry uh those are the books and the legends the story i'll be reading and so uh she's done remarkable in her journey and so today's tuesday empowerment talk the topic is journey to the top and so I, I couldn't be more honored and uh, uh, for, all, for all of us to have her on the call here with us to learn about her journey, her, 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 to hear her story, her journey and her triumph and how she got to the top of a, a company that uh, that's worldwide. I mean, you know, it's one thing of being, a, being spent a lot of years in this industry. It's another of spending, you know, she has spent 27 years of her life with that company and have achieved, uh, it's a multi-billion dollar company and has achieved number one rank, number one worldwide in that company. So uh, without further ado, she's joining us all the way from Aspen, Colorado. Let's welcome our special guest, Christy. Peterson. Hi, Christine. Hi. It's such Welcome. an honor to be here. Oh, honor is ours. I mean, you, what an incredible, incredible journey. And you and I had a little chance to talk a little bit uh, before the call. And, and I'm humbled and honored uh, for someone like yourself that have had so much success uh, in your career and, uh, and choose to be a part of three. And so uh, maybe, you know, we could start off um, uh before we start, Christine, maybe you could share with the audience a little bit about your background, because I was totally impressed when you and I had talked before the call. Uh, share with the audience about your background and uh, how you got into this industry. Oh, thank you. Well, I never imagined that I would be in this type of industry because I really didn't even understand it. But uh, my background, I was a teacher. Uh, I taught school for 17 years. I grew up in California. I'm a fifth generation Californian. And uh, um, I went to school. I did everything I was supposed to do. And then I started teaching. I taught school in uh, Los Angeles for two years. Then I went and taught school in Japan for three years. And I uh, worked for the Department of Defense, uh, being a teacher on a base over there and loved it and Used to travel, what and I really. Japan? What part of Japan were you in? Yeah, I was just outside of Tokyo. It's called Yokota Air Base. It was during the Vietnam War, mm. and the fighter pilots were coming in and out. And of course, I found this good-looking fighter pilot had a motorcycle, and he was flying these jets, and uh, had a Corvette, and it was just like something you saw in the movies. Right. But uh, so I always say my daughter was made in Japan. Uh -huh. But uh, but it was an exciting career, and then I came back. Uh, uh, to America. And my husband at that time, uh, he became a, a pilot for the airlines. And I was a teacher. And mm -hmm. uh, as the years went on, and went on and on and on. I just one day I, uh, I woke up, I said, you know, I'm just tired of being poor. You know, mm -hmm. I just could never get ahead. You know, when you're a teacher, I mean, it's a great profession. I mean, it is really, uh, you, it's just, it's great, but you never really get paid for what you're worth. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, like um, stuff, I was just, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I just was contemplating, what am I going to do? And I was 39 years old, almost 40 years old. Mm. And I was going like, 
what can I do? Well, my mother said, go back and get your master's. And I said, doesn't make sense. You know, That's why would I spend that money? Me. <laughs> yeah. My, but my mother had, had said, no, you must be educated. You must get your degrees and you must do this and that. And, and someone, uh, I had a friend reach out to me and she said, well, you know, uh, she said, I have this business opportunity I want you to hear about. And I knew that she was in that Mary Kay thing, but I wasn't too sure what that was all about. But I went just to help her out, maybe like some of you on this call today. Um, I went to help her out, be a good friend. And I drove up and there was this pink Cadillac sitting outside. And I said, oh, I would never drive a pink car, but, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's good for them, but not for me. Hmm. But there's some real lessons that I want to point out this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, that evening I went in and I saw there were five ladies there. And there was a lady and she was driving the pink Cadillac. She was a Berkeley graduate. That intrigued me that a Berkeley graduate would be doing this business. Hmm. And, um, and so immediately they thought, oh, they thought I'd be great at this. Hmm. And they showed me what the women were making. And I, I was like, I, I looked at it and I thought, wow, I, I can't even believe what they're making. And I said, well, maybe I could drive that pink car after all. You know, my pride was never greater than my pocketbooks. But I, but you know what? That evening, I didn't say, oh, yes. I just said, no, I, I think I'll just stick to teaching. Now, I wasn't mm -hmm. thinking that at all. I just needed some space. I mm -hmm. needed to go home. But they were smart enough to send literature home. And I every night for three nights, I would look at all oh, what they were making and what they were doing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then... But nobody ever called me back. Hmm. Ah, nobody followed up. So follow now, up is key. <laughs> uh huh. If they had called me the next day or the day after, I was really, I wasn't too sure if I could do this because I'd been in school my whole life. You know, I went to school, I went to the universities, I taught school. I'd never sold anything except Girl Scout cookies. And then suddenly I was going to go into this world. I thought, I don't know. In California, we worked hard to look natural. I wasn't too sure if I would be wearing much makeup. And, uh, but I wanted it. I really wanted more. It was down in me, but I wasn't too sure. Mm. But they planted the seed. Mm. Nobody called back. But three months later, my friend, uh, I, I got, it was end of May and I went like, oh my, if these, I was teaching kindergarten at that time and their span of attention is about two minutes. And so I, I thought, you know what, what was that Mary Kay thing? Maybe, hmm. maybe they would take me. Oh, wow. Isn't that interesting? It yeah. talks about being insecure. <laughs> you know what people are thinking. They're like, well, come home. <laughs> yes. And so I went home and I picked up the phone. And I called my friend, Billy. I said, Billy, what does it take to be in Mary Kay? And she told me, and I said, can I come up and sign up right now? I made that decision. And she said, well, uh, yes. Now, get this. I was her first and only recruit. Wow. I drove up, up to her house. I lived in a little tiny town called Fallbrook, California, or the avocado capital of the world. Mm. And so I drove over and I said, okay, give me the paperwork. And I filled it out. Lesson number one, don't try to talk them in or out or explain more. They're just ready to do it. Do it. So mm. I did. And I said, uh, do I need to order some products? She says, oh, just a little bit every three months. And I thought, well, how, how do you make the money? But I always followed instructions. So I said, OK. Uh, I went back home and she had the presence to call her director who lived in San Francisco. Mm. And she said, oh, well, what about your product that you'll be starting your business with? And I said, that's what we did in Mary Kay. Here we don't, we do personal consumption. Mm. And uh, she, uh, she said, well, it'd be X amount of dollars. And I went, oh gosh, I don't know. And then I thought, well, you know, okay, if I'm in, I'm going in for everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's like buying a founders, I guess, you know? <laughs> so I, I, uh, um, I, I said to my friend, by the way, before I left, I said, could I try this product? And she said, oh yes, in a week. And so a week later I went back and she stood me up. Mm. And so I came back, put my own product on, and then I started my career. I never saw her again. Mm. She never trained me. I, she, I said, where do we get trained? She said, look in the yellow pages. I said, okay. So I found a director in San Diego. And so I taught school every day. And then I would go out and do appointments during the evening. And then I, on Saturdays, I'd drive by myself, but I got the picture. Mm. And then I came back and I told my little 
tiny town that had no hotels. I said, we are going to be the number one here. We are going to build in this community. And I rented a little red schoolhouse Mm. and there was like five or six people. And then pretty soon the community started coming in from all sorts. And Mm. then we was a hundred people. And Mm. then we started building leaders Mm. and I got really excited. And I really just followed instructions and I, uh, of what they told me to do. Mm. And, um, and, uh, then all of a sudden, I built seven leaders, which I think you would probably say was on the four star level, you know, mm. about that level. Mm. Uh, I had seven that first year, and I was excited. Man, I'm going to be a national sales director one year from now. This is it. This is a piece of cake. Mm-hmm. But some didn't quite want to stay. Some mm. didn't want, to, they had other priorities. And suddenly, they were dripping off. And then about that time, we were making a move to Houston, Texas. Hmm. And I arrived and I went, wow, is this still for me? Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. And you will feel this in the industry. You'll have wall kicking moments. You'll have self-doubt. I don't know. The people, sometimes you want it more for people than you want it for yourself. That's right. And so I thought, you know what? And when I moved to Houston, there were 60 directors there. And uh, there'd been an oil crash. Everybody moved out of Houston, but Mm -hmm. I saw opportunity. I said, Uh they all need a career. We didn't have Facebook. uh, Mm -hmm. We didn't have any social media. So what I did is I just simply, I I just started going to Starbucks. I'd go, we didn't really have cell phones. You know, they had those Mm -hmm. big cell phones. Uh, I, I went out every day and said, you know, I'm going to talk to 10 new people. I'm going to meet 10 new people. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do. And then I, I started casting the vision. I kept saying, we're going to be the number one in Houston. Mm. And I had, I had two people. <laughs> and then I had three people. And then That's I had four people. And then, you know what I did? Mm. Because we didn't have computers. I sent a newsletter out to my people in California. Mm. And I, I printed out on the front. I said, it was my newsletter. Mm. And I put, uh, welcome new consultants. And then I put in the center, I said, where they were from. Mm. And I said, and the person that cared. Mm. And down the side, I put, you know, I put their names. And it was all Houston, 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 Houston. And the person that cared was Christine Peterson, Christine Peterson, Christine Peterson, Christine Peterson, Christine Peterson, showing I was going on with or without them. Mm. Mm. No one was going to stop my dream. And this is really important because you're people are going to try to sabotage you. And, and then the people would call back and say, wow, you're really, you're, you're going on. I said, yeah, <laughs> I see it. And, and two years later, we became a national area. Wow. And, uh, we had the biggest area there. And then I moved on. Um, I, I solidified my people. I got my executives in order. I mm. built national sales directors like myself. Mm. Under and in Mexico, I used to ride the buses in Mexico and the Futura buses. Wow. All the cities, you know, sleeping on cots with mosquitoes. And, <laughs> you know, I couldn't speak the language, but, you know, these, everybody loves everybody in this world, really, you know. And so we, we just Aww. built there. We built the number one national there. And then I moved to Chicago, mm. built in Dallas, Chicago, because you know why? Acorns cannot grow under an oak tree. That's right. So I moved, solidified mm-hmm. those leaders, and then moved there, then moved to Atlanta, and then Miami, and mm-hmm. ended up, uh, I had a great career. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. You know, Christine, you know, that's, I mean, it's interesting times and the times that you were building compared to times that we're in now, right? With yeah. technology, with cell phone and all that. You know, you and I had a little brief conversation before the call here today. And I love what you said, the three types of people that you're building. So maybe you could share with the audience uh, uh, about what the three the three things, the three types of people that are building. And I think that pretty much some, in my opinion, when I listened to that, you were sharing with that a little earlier, I go, wow. I mean, the audience really need to hear that. Because that journey from how you started, you know, part time as a school teacher and then, you know, just starting in a new town and, you know, unknown, but putting the flag on the map. So maybe you could share with the audience about the three types of people that are building. I think that's fascinating. Yeah. Well, you know, I realized that uh, 
you know, I really needed to build leaders. But we do have three types of people in our industry. And, uh, and there's no right or wrong. But mm. it's just what, what you want and where you want to be. Mm. But, um, you know, we'll have people even in three that are product, product users. They'll build family, friends. They'll have a little group. And, and they, they're just wonderful. And they're the bedrock. And we want lots of those people. And, and they're happy there. That's, that's all they want to be. They just want to be product users and share with their family and their friends. And then you're going to have a separate group of people who are now going to three-star, four-star, five-star. They're building big organizations. They're building volume into the tree. I mean, they are really moving it. But the third type is people builders. Mm. They're the people that build the leaders. And to create great wealth, you need to have leaders. The greatest leader of all is the one that builds the most leaders. And I'm going to give you an example. When I was in Mary Kay, for years, um, I wasn't always the queen on the throne of being the one that sold the most product. My area wasn't always the one that had the biggest volume. But I was always in the top 10 as a director before I got to national, Mm -hmm. but I was building leaders. Mm. I knew long-term that building leaders was the key. And I didn't care to sit on that throne. Mm -hmm. I didn't care one bit. The rank wasn't a big deal to me. I was focused on my people, helping them get to where they want to go. And at the end of the day, I passed them all up. (laughs) I built more leaders. And I remember uh, directors and even nationals later on would say, you never talked about being as a top director or being on the throne. I said, no, my goal was always to be national and to be an elite executive national. Mm. That means that I had five or more nationals underneath me. Actually, I ended up having about 16 nationals in my area, but I focused on those people and the volume came. The volume comes with the leaders, because if you think about it, you get one great Mm go-getter, one Mm -hmm. great go-getter can bring in a thousand people or more. (laughs) And then it's an attraction principle. We attract who we are. Mm -hmm. And so I'm right now in three, Mm -hmm. I'm focused on finding 10 great people. So now, before we talk about three, I really want to want to talk about this. I think I think you know, Christine, it's, it does. It's interesting. It doesn't matter what company we're with right. in the space we're in. It's all about building up people. It's yes. you know, you know, but obviously the product is just a tool, right? The yes. product is just a tool. Yes. The company is a platform, but. You know, when, when, and, and we are in the business of building up people. Cause when you help, I, I, I think Zig Ziglar has said this when you help enough people to get what they want, then we will get what we want. Exactly. And so in, in, it is exactly like what you said is about building up people. And I, I love it. Maybe we can recap a little bit. There are people that are coming in here, they build products, they love products, they share right. products, right? And they're the second type of people are they are here to build what volumes? Yes. They build volume. They're focused on volume. They focus on volume, meaning they they chase transaction. They chase volume. And the third type of people, I mean, you, when you told me this afternoon, I'm like, Christine, nail it in his head. The third type of people, how you built wealth in this space is you build up leaders. You build up people. That is fascinating. Okay. So now um, I want to talk about, so you've been in, you were with Mary Kay for 27 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. why you leave Mary Kay after 27 years? Well, um, I didn't want to leave. Uh, I loved it. Um, it was a great company. It is a great company. Um, but when you get to the national level, it is mandatory you retire at 65. And then they give you a family security plan. Basically, they're buying your business out. Mm. And so they started, they said, it's time for you to retire. So hmm. then they started paying me out for 15 years. Wow. And so there I was uh, sitting on my island in Miami going, Whoo! now what? I don't want to retire and die. I have too much to do. I have to have purpose. I'm not a pampered poodle. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I have to have 
I have to help people. Right. And, and, um, so, so Christina, I want to, I want to, I want to ask this question because it's, it's fascinating. Now you and I talked and, and I asked you if it's okay to share your age and you said, okay. So mm-hmm. would you share with the audience how old you are, Christine? I'm 81 years old. My goodness, Christine. <laughs> When I grow up, I want to be like you. Aren't you? You know, when we were doing a little sound check and, and, a, and a light check, I mean, like I said, oh, my God, I need to put some blush on my face. You look fabulous. So, OK, Christine, now at 81 years old, at, I mean, you have incredible success. And even with the, you know, the retirement plan that they paid you, I mean, it's remarkable. Most people work a job, you know, of 30 years or 50 years. They don't get that kind of retirement plan. You have that. So my question to you is, Christine, why at age 81, why you choose three? Why, why three? Well, honestly, um, well, first of all, I have to have passion. I've worked since I've been 14. Mm. You know, my first job was scrubbing pans at a bakery. And, and you know, and I worked up and went, you, you know, the rest of my career. But I remember Warren Buffett saying, you know, never retire. Look at Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world. He says, you, you don't want to retire and die. You just got to have purpose, get up. And you see many, many successful people that have this attitude. I, I just didn't want to retire. But I'll tell you, honestly, um, I moved out here to Aspen because my daughter said, Mom, you need to get off the East Coast. And, you know, you tell them what to do in the first part of your life, and then tell, they tell you what to do. So I moved out here just outside of Aspen in the Roaring Fork Valley, uh, Glenwood Springs. And I was sitting here looking out at Mount Sopras and much like your background in Sonoma, the red hills, the pine trees. And I'm going like, I, I don't, what is this? I have too much more to give. I want to live to over 100. And um, I've got to have purpose. Now, of course, all my neighbors have already that I've met in my community are going like, what? What can't you join? I said, well, no, I'm building a business. I don't have time to play cards. What, what do you mean you're building a business? I said, no, I have, I have a purpose. I have people I have to help. Mm. So with that being said, I have companies all the time. Mm. I, I say it humbly, mm. trying to recruit me. Mm. They, I mean, every other week, these companies will come by and say, oh, we want you to join our company. We'll even do this for you. We'll mm. do that. And I'm mm. going, no. No, no. So I don't what jump you around. What was in three? What did you see in three? What all was right. in three? Is it- well, all yes. right. I'll tell you that. And that's a good question. I said, if I ever came out to do a third company, I don't jump. It would be number one, it would be a new company because that's where great things happen. Great blessings, great I things do. can happen. Yes, Exactly. <laughs> I never was able to be part of a new company. You know, I was. That's right. Because you told me when you joined Mary Kay, Mary Kay was already 19 years old. Yes, it was almost 20 years old. It was 19 years old. And you still rank up to the top. There's a story to that later on. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. Uh And so um, I thought, but I said, you have to be careful with a new company. Sometimes people don't really have the, they don't have the experience. They don't have the vision. And then when I, um, you know, I would want a company that was well funded. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to be out of business in two years. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that would be number one. And someone has a grand vision to build globally in the global e commerce uh, universe. Um, secondly, I said, what would the product be? Mm-hmm. I said, I want to be in the supplement industry because in uh, 2020, the supplement industry was about uh, $60 billion. But in four more years, it's going to be about $128 billion dollars. And so you want to be in a company that has a supply and demand. I wouldn't want to be in the business of selling Gucci handbags every five years. I want something that I'm going to consume and people are going to reorder every month. And there is a need for that. But as you know, there are a lot, a lot, the the dirty little secret is a lot of our um, supplements come from two to three big manufacturing companies Mm -hmm. and people go there and do white label, private label, and I said, I don't want to be part of that. They're all the same. It has to be unique and different. That would that would be my dream. And mm-hmm. third, I said, compensation. Mm-hmm. Because um, I loved my what I did in Mary Kay, but it was a different compensation. 
it was a different compensation. And why are you how you did it with that compensation until you until you see me, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, it was uh, it was amazing. Hmm. And so as I sat there, and people were, and I'd say, no, no, no. Hmm. Amy Dunlop reached out to me, and uh, and you know the story of the black crows. Uh, in fact, the black crows were around. Must have been giving me good energy this evening. Uh, the black crows were flying around my house and I couldn't figure out what in the world they were on my deck. They were on my rooftop. And I was, what in the world are they doing? And Amy called me wow. and she said, uh, she says, would you be open to hearing about it? And of course she had known I had built in Asia too. And she is saying, I need some advice for Asia. And I'm going, okay, Amy. Uh, all right. I kind of knew she was trying to recruit me in something. I didn't know what she was doing, but and then she said, I, there's this new company. I think you'd just be great. Would you be open? I said, okay, Amy, I'll listen. Hmm. So can you believe this? I said, if you fly out and see me at my house, <laughs> the nerve of me. And so she says, yes, I'll fly out. So she came out and she was sitting at my dining room table and George Ruiz came in. She brought George Ruiz in and, uh, and she was sitting at the table and she said, I'll never forget this. She said, of course, I really thought I was going to do it after I heard, but I didn't want to reveal that I was going to keep my <laughs> card <laughs> close to my vest, you know. And uh, uh, she said, you know, I just don't want you to think I was a looney tune. But, you know, I was walking down St. Louis and these black crows started flying all around me and it almost attacking me. And there was no trees. And I went to my spiritual advisor and I said, is that a bad sign? And she said, no, that means there's new beginnings, new enlightenments that are going to be happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, I thought of you. And I, I picked up the phone and I said, really, when did that happen? Tell me about the black crows. Mm -hmm. And then I told her about my black crows and it was the same week. Now mm -hmm. I know that sounds like, woo, 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 but we always <laughs> felt like the black crows had connected us. Wow. And, uh, yeah. And wow. so, um, and I did talk to Daniel. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted to check him out mm -hmm. and I liked him. I loved his vision, his passion mm -hmm. and his experience. And I felt really solid with him. And I, I really think he's an amazing leader and mm -hmm. I, and he's driven. I like mm -hmm. that. He's yeah. passionate. Yeah. He's driven. And I do, I do believe in his vision. And mm -hmm. I thought I want to be part of this. Mm. I want to be part of something great where I can build a whole set of new leaders. Absolutely. That's exciting. I mean, thank you. By the way, you know, I, I live in Sedona. So right here in this house, I always see black crows flying around. <laughs> and sometimes you will see the black crow that will land. And we, at the end of the call, I'm going to go out to my balcony so you can see. <laughs> There's actually black crows that would sit there on the fence. Because you know why right behind it's a national forest, so I'm gonna we're gonna show you. But anyway, so, mm, so now, now Christine, now you know what? Because of time, let's do this. You know, after spending 42 years in this space, mm -hmm. let's take. You know what? Like, let's just, we have a lot of professionals who has never been involved in this space before, yeah. but because something is so different, like what you said in three, they they just send something different about this company, something unique yes. about this company. So they became a part of it. So maybe through your 42 years of experience, maybe you could share with our audience, like you take someone brand new when they come in, what are some of the things, like what are the top three things that they should expect in this journey? Number one, okay, so number one, what, what should they expect in this journey? And then number two, we're going to talk about your recommendation. What are the activities to focus on? So, okay, Christine. Okay. Well, first of all, um, you need to talk to everyone and never prejudge at all. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you'll be excited. There's about a 30, 60 days, you know, you get revved up. You're excited about the new vision and everything. And about 60 days later, you kind of like, wait a minute. Some of people said, no. Oh, and then you start to self doubt yourself and you kind of go like, maybe this isn't for me, but it is. Mm -hmm. You just haven't talked to enough people. And, um, it's, it's just part of the journey yeah. and, and you just have to keep going through it because I never worry about who says no. I worry about who I miss mm. because there's somebody right around the corner and I always ask for referrals. You know, I teach my people, uh, who do you know mm. that, you know, that wants to be part of our uh, mission, our mm. 
uh, mm-hmm. our enlightenment. But you know what I love is that you have a chance in our industry to build your own business and your own wealth. And you can't do that in corporate America. For you all that are new on this, you know, I think we've been trained since childhood, go to school, get a good job, go get a job and work hard, trade time for money. And, you know, that's the true pyramid, really. If you think about <laughs> that's it. That's a legal yeah. pyramid, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that is like one chairman of the board, one CEO, one president, a few vice presidents, and a few managers. And then there's the all these hundreds of people in the cubicles going every day so loyal, trading time for money, and, and never can get ahead. And the top people make the big bonuses. They drive off in their second homes. They have their Mercedes. They have their Rolls Royces. They go on the trips. And you're just thinking, what happened here? Mm-hmm. And it's uh, and that's just the way it is out there in any corporation. So that's what I love about it. It doesn't matter the background here. Mm-hmm. You could be, you don't even have to have a high school diploma. It doesn't matter your race, your background. You could be a highly educated. Anybody can come in here. And mm-hmm. I, as a kindergarten school teacher, didn't know anything, but it was like a burning desire. So what I did and what I still do today, I look for people like myself. Mm. I am looking for go-getters. Mm. I'm looking for people that have energy, mm. people that have influence. And I'm not just talking about an influencer that's on the YouTube. I'm looking for someone that walks into a party and everybody gathers around them. I'm First looking for, mm. yes. And I see people, um, it could be the lady at the church who organizes all the events. She mm. knows all those people. You know, mm-hmm. and everybody go to her. And um, I'm looking for people that have the influence because mm-hmm. if I can capture them and, mm-hmm. and I work with the new and the few, mm-hmm. it's the 80 20 Pareto principle. 20% of all your work will come from the top 20%. Now, I love all my people. I love my people. I'm always here for them. Uh, they're my number one. I get up in the morning at, at six. I'm dressed at seven. I'm on the Zoom with my people doing my person power to, and to get them going. Then we, then we get them on Amy's uh, event. But I, every morning I get up because you see, I think a leader has to be inconvenienced. Mm. And then I'm up late at night. Because I, I know you are. We, we were talking I, some, yes, some late night. I, yes, I'm up late at night, but mm. my people depend on me. Mm. I have to show up. I'm in the show business. That's right. That's and right. I do Zoom calls every night mm. from Sunday to Friday night and, and uh, Sunday. I take Saturday night off. Uh-huh. And I'm doing a Zoom call. My people can count on me because mm. I'm building them up and I'm working with those few and those new people to get them off to a great start, because I need to know that they're going to be uh, introducing, talking to their two people, making their list of mm-hmm. people. And mm-hmm. I want to get in there and help them. And I'm doing the heavy lifting. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah. I'm here. They can count on me. But with that being said, too, as you start to go along and build a business, you know, you're going to you're going to be frustrated and and, and and even me, and I know Kim, you've experienced that because you're an icon. I mean, I mean, you're just uh, you were an icon. That was one of the reasons I didn't tell you. I checked out who is this woman. I said, oh, okay, I can partner up with her. I get her vision because that's who I am too. I mean, I'm not on your level, but I mean, I'm I Aww. I get the vision. I get the vision, and I want to be part. Like-minded people find each other. You know, it's an attraction principle. You know, it's like even if you put it down like from 10, 9, 8, 7, mm. all the way down to 1. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for the 8, 9s, and 10s. That's right. That's because a, that's- 8, 9s, and 10s can attract and enroll anybody down below. But 1, 2s, and 3s can never enroll 8, 9s, and 10s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have to say recruit up, right? Yes. So recruit something that's better than yourself. Yes, yes. Always level up, level up because it makes it easier because those people at the top are more go-getters. They're, they're entrepreneurs. They're, mm. they've risen up. Like yeah. if I were going to a restaurant, I wouldn't be talking to the dishwasher. I would be talking to the manager. Mm. You know, mm. even when I go, you know, I build, I believe I've got so much to say, build locally and um, build globally uh, because, you know, I may, I may go to a Chinese restaurant every week. 
or a Vietnamese restaurant and I get them build that relationship. And yes. then I'll say to them, Oh, you did such an amazing job. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. love your restaurant. You take, you organize as such. They must pay you a lot mm-hmm. of money. <laughs> and they would say, go, not really. Right, and they go, well, not really. And I go, really? Well, I bet you'd be great doing what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. Let me get your name and number. I'd love to get back to you. Well, what is it? Oh, well, I'll tell you, you're busy. I don't go into blah, 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 blah. I've got this amazing products, blah, 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 blah. I said, I'll call you tomorrow. And so I just love talking to people, but I'm looking for this, this group of people up here because mm-hmm. they are, they have more energy, they're driven, and they attract other people like mm-hmm. themselves. That's right. That's awesome. So Christine, I, I mean, like just to kind of sum it up um, now. So the journey that people should expect, I mean, we all gone through okay. the honeymoon oh, yeah. stage, right? So when we first got started in, in the industry, you know, we, it's all exciting. We saw hope, you know, we were all <laughs> activated. Then, then when we start work, you know, working it and, and working it and what happens then when we get rejection, right? Yes. Like, but, you know, we, we, you said no to me and, and all this stuff. One after another, one might be the first one. They go, you know what? I think I got this. The second one, the third one, and the fourth one. It's like it's like a relationship. You know, the yeah. honeymoon stage is over, and a yeah. lot of times it's that time that when people quit. And yeah. I love what you said, Christine. It's like you got to hold tight. And I remember we had, a, I think we had talked this offline a little bit beforehand. Mm-hmm. Is that you got to hold tight to your dream? What's your vision? What yeah. do you want to yeah. do? Because we will enter that honeymoon stage when that. Zizzo's gone. You got to work on the other part, which is your dream that will carry carry on. And and so you know, and so I, I love what you share about the activity. Also, uh, Christine, when you go out and talk to people, don't vomit and tell them everything about what this is. You know, yeah. there's a time and space. You know, to right. talk to your prospect, get their phone number, or get in touch with them. Right. Outside, when they're not working, then you go work with them. And the third part you share, Christine, is, is about building up people. You're always there for your people. And so, yeah. uh, well, you know what? The AI just gave me a thumbs up. So, yeah. uh, so Christine, because of time, maybe, you know what? Maybe some final words of uh, words of wisdom for a lot of the new people here on the call here today. What, what, would, you, what would you say the top three things that they should focus on? With, if you were to say that there's three things that's so critical for them, for you, yourself, in, in a household name company to get, you know, after 19 years, that company's been around for 19 years, then you rank yourself up all the way to the top worldwide. So yeah. what were the three things that you would share? When people are embarking on this journey, what, what are the top three things that they, they should have, you think? To, to achieve no, the they success need to, and realize they need, their dreams. Yeah, they need to be making connections every day with new people. That is, you know, I always teach my people to talk to 10 new people every day, making contacts, either through Facebook, Instagram, just building relationships, building, building, because numbers never let you down. That's right. That's right. Most people talk to one or two people and then they go uh, and they say, I, uh, nobody wants to do this. And I go, well, how many did you talk to? Well, three. Well, no, (laughs) we're just starting. We're just starting. And that is why the ones that keep on, we just talk to more people. That's right. That's right. So number one is activities. You got to have activities every day. Like, you know, when you go build your business, you don't, if you are fishermen, we we talk about this before, if you're fishermen, you don't go, you know, spread your nets three days out of a week and then four days you hang your nets. You don't do that. Everyday activities. That's right. Perfect. And what about second thing, Christine? Um, then, then when, when, when you bring them in, immediately get them started and get them into your perfect start, your orientation, ground them and have them make lists for you of who they want to. Now we're going to do the duplication, That's you right. see, and then we're going to start working through their 10 people and duplicate. It's a simple business. It's mm-hmm. duplication, duplication, but you can't just sign somebody up and say, okay, go get them. No, mm-hmm. you need, they need to be well-trained. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And they need to know you are there for them. So uh-huh. I immediately say, make your list of a hundred people mm-hmm. and let's go down and get the top 10 people that you think are go-getters, influencers. And then we'll go and start with, and let's set up those appointments where I can do the Zooms with you. I'm your uh-huh. business partner. Okay. Part three. 
and never, yeah, never give up. And you're, th- this is where you, you, you you're g- never give up. I mean, right. I mean, I could have said, remember I said in the beginning, I, I came out roaring my first year and, and I was like, man, I'm going to be a national in another year. And I've got seven directors and leaders in motion. And then some are like, whoa. And I, and then they, some gave up. I could have quit. Then I would have allowed them to de- uh, decide on my destiny. And, right. and it would destroy my dream. I said, no way. Mm-hmm. I believe in this. And see, I'm really excited. See, I know we have just a short amount of time, but all of you are so uh, lucky to be right where you are. I built two huge organizations in Mary Kay in the same climate of right now. Mm. Our business is counter cyclical. When people are out of work, people have high inflation, people are looking for curse. Don't you dare prejudge anyone. That's and right. the person you least expect, it could be a, a woman that you think that her husband is, a, is the president of a company, but you don't know if he's just been laid off. Because with the AI coming, <laughs> uh, thousands of jobs are being laid off. You talk to everyone. And so I will say to them, if you're intimidated, they're kind of on your chicken list. Mm. You know, I will always just say, you know, I know you probably wouldn't be interested in this, but I'm, I'm really, I'm building a new business in the health and wellness arena. I said, do you know of anyone that might be interested in uh, joining our global e-commerce movement to build our billion dollar platform? I'm looking for leaders. Would you know of anybody that would be interested that's fabulous. So, so Christine, to sum it up, it's three things. One is activity and daily activities, right? Yes. So, you know, we got to set, set some goals every day, like for you, for myself. Like yes. I, when I started it, I talked to at least 20 people a day until I find someone running, right? Yes. So minimum, so minimum 10 people a day. But the key thing is, Christine, we have the same, right? Don't make your minimum your maximum, a lot of times people make their, 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 their minimum, their maximum, right? So, and the second thing is to support your team. When your people are coming on board, you know, onboard them, right? Onboard them, show them, make yes. a list and guide them through it. And number three thing, if I heard you correctly, is consistency. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a pattern. You consistently support that. Just repeat and rinse, repeat and rinse. Yeah. And so- it- that's fabulous. And you know what? Because of time, Christine, I, I do want to take a, a moment to show you where where the black pros oh, always yes, fly. Yes. 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 So because, you know, I think it's, it's, it's such a beautiful time of day here in Sedona. <sighs> and uh, I normally don't do this, but I, I want to show you guys this. Isn't well, that gorgeous? It's, it's usually you see that, that that is like a footprint of black crow. So they usually I would see every morning. Black hole fly. You know what? I just saw something. Something just flew by. But anyway, right here, you will see the black crow flying by. But you know, that is awesome. Is that you know people coming in here in this platform? Uh, you know, I often tell the story, Christine. You know, look, I came to this country. My mom and dad took us four girls coming to the country. You know, we were living in a one bedroom apartment with six people, and having a blessing in this space, in this industry, in this country. Uh, to have acquired the, the blessing that we have. And, you know, Christine, and, and I think more power to you, Christine, for women, okay? For women out there, it's about empowerment. Empower- I thank you, Christine, for being a part of three, for saying yes to Amy. And, and, and truly, this is what this platform is all about. And, you know, at Christine, at age 81, I tell you, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> but we're just so beginning. with that. I I, I want to say thank you. absolutely. We're just beginning, and I want to say thank you for for joining us here tonight on the Empowerment Tuesday. And uh, and I, I I can't wait for you to come here. And uh, you know what? When I see a black crow flying by, I'll snap a <laughs> picture and I send it over to you. So with that, Christine, thank you so much for being thank a part you. of this call and being a part of three. And to all our our entrepreneurs out there. You know what? If you have a dream, if you dare to dream, Mm -hmm. dare to work it. You know, we are no different. And Christine was a school teacher. I was an accountant. 
And so, and yet we were able to manifest and work hard towards our dream and with something that we're passionate about. So with that, thank you so much for coming on, Christine. And thank you everyone for tuning in on this Empowerment Tuesday. We'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you so much, Christine, again, for being on the call here today. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Have a great day.